all unicorns are purple. Or even better yet, all unicorns can do math. Both of these statements are actually true in mathematics, which really defies common logic. In this video, I'm going to explain why these things are true in mathematics. But before we do that, I want to talk a little bit about this book, because this book also explains why those statements are true. The book is called How to Prove It, A Structured Approach, and it was written by Velman. I first heard of this book through the comments here on the channel. Several people kept leaving comments saying what an amazing book this actually is. So I'll be honest, when I first started reading the book, I did find it a little bit wordy. And I was thinking, hmm, I don't really know if I want to read this book. But I sat down, I gave it a chance, and I cannot believe how good this book is. I was completely blown away. One downside is that it is a paperback, but I've been taking advantage of that. I find that it's easier to read paperbacks while laying in bed. And that's primarily where I've read this book while laying in bed. I've also done several of the exercises, which I didn't do in bed. I think this is an incredible book for anyone who wants to learn how to write proofs. So let's go ahead and open this book up and take a look inside. So the contents start with logic, and it spends a great deal of time on logic explaining everything in incredible detail. Then it talks about proofs, and you can see there's all kinds of different proofs that it does. Relations, functions, mathematical induction, and it finishes with infinite sets. So very typical in terms of contents compared to other proof writing books. Here's an example of a proof that I worked through. It says prove that for every real number x, if x squared is greater than or equal to x, then either x is less than or equal to zero or x is greater than or equal to one. And what I like about this book is that he breaks down the scratch work and that's exactly what I call it when I'm working out proofs, which I think is super cool. Then here he states it as a theorem and goes through the proof after going through the scratch work. So he actually shows you how to figure out the proofs and he does it in incredible detail. This book also has tons of exercises, which I think is really good if you're looking for extra practice problems. One of the downsides though, is that it does not contain solutions to any of the exercises. Just gotta give it a whiff. Yeah, my copy smells fairly new. Okay, let's do a little bit of logic and I'm going to explain why those statements I mentioned at the beginning of this video are actually true. In order to understand the stuff I was talking about during the beginning of this video, you have to know a little bit of mathematical logic. So let me just show you so that you can understand why statements like all unicorns can do math or all unicorns are purple are actually true mathematically. So this upside down A, this symbol means for all. And this backwards E, this symbol means there exists. These are examples of things we call quantifiers in mathematics. All right, I'm gonna let A be equal to a set. A set is just a collection of objects. So if I write for all X in A, that's exactly how you read it. And this symbol here is read is in, belongs to, I just read it for all X in A. So in, in, in. So for all X in A. For all X in A. So if someone just says X in A, you can say X is in A, you can say X is an element of A, X belongs to A, X is a member of A. So there's a bunch of different ways to say it, but typically when you look at it, you just say for all X in A. And then if someone does this, this means there exists X in A. Okay, so there's a bunch more logic you actually need to like fully understand this. So I'm just gonna jump into it now and do my best to explain and hopefully it makes sense. By the way, if someone writes P of X, this is a statement. We don't know if it's true, we don't know if it's false. This is a statement that depends on X. So this is going to be a statement. All right, so for all X in A, P of X, we're saying that for all X and A, we're investigating the statement P of X. This is the same as saying, so I'm gonna write a little symbol here. The opposite of the opposite of for all X and A, P of X. So this is a negation symbol. So common sense should tell you that the opposite of the opposite is what you start with. And that's exactly what this says here. 
In mathematics, people give this a fancy name. They call it the double negation law. All of these logic laws have you know, rules and names in mathematics, and they're all described in the book that I was talking about before. All right, so now what we're going to do, by the way, this double arrow is an equivalence arrow. It means that whatever I write here is the same as what I write here. So this is the same as, so I'm gonna keep this one, and I'm going to distribute this one through, okay? So the opposite of this statement is there exists an X in A such that P of X is not true. So this is something that you would need to, you know, learn in a mathematical logic class to fully understand this. So if you just believe me that it's true, everything is good. <laughs> so quantifier negation Law. This is one of the most important ones, by the way. If you ever study calculus and you do proofs in calculus, this is really, really important. Like to negate the definition of a limit, this is the one you would use, right? You're negating a for all statement. So for all x and a, p of x, the opposite of that is there exists an x and a such that p of x is false. Now here's the thing. If a is equal to the empty set, Okay, so if A is actually the empty set, there's nothing in it, there's no way that this can be true. So if this is true, then this is false, right? Because there's no X's in A, so there can't exist an X in A, so this is false. But the opposite of false is true. So this whole thing becomes true. That means this is true. So if A is empty, the statement for all X in A, P of X, is true and that's the key right that's the key that's the key behind everything in this video and this is super key so for example if I let a be the set of all unicorns and I let P of X be the statement X is purple and just for fun we'll do Q of X X can do math. Then if we look at the statement for all X and A, P of X, this is saying that all unicorns are purple. But is this statement true and why is it true? Well, it's pretty simple. There are no unicorns. Unicorns don't exist. So A is equal to the empty set. Therefore, all unicorns are purple. Same thing here. If I write for all X and A, Q of X, same thing, right? Unicorns don't exist. So A is the empty set. So for all X and A, um, Q of X is true. So that means that all unicorns can do math. So this statement says that all unicorns are purple, and this one says that all unicorns can do math. And both of these are true mathematically by what we investigated here. And this idea is explained in the book I was talking about. So it's a really awesome book and hopefully some of this has made sense. Um, a lot of this is probably beyond you, especially this statement here if you haven't studied logic, but it's studied near the beginning of a logic course or you can buy a book and learn it on your own. It's really cool stuff. So yeah, hopefully you have learned something in this video. And I think this is a really cool book and I just wanna say thank you to all of the subscribers here on the channel who have mentioned this book because they kept mentioning it and it just came up so much that I thought, okay, I have to buy it. And I bought it and honestly, it was a soft cover. So it's not something that I was that excited about. And then when I started reading it, I did find it a little bit wordy and then I gave it a chance. And honestly, I am super impressed. This is an incredible proof writing book and I definitely recommend it. I will try to leave a, just a link <laughs> in the description of this video. So if you wanna check it out, you can pick it up. I don't remember how much my copy was. It wasn't super expensive, but it also wasn't super cheap. I think I paid more than $10 for this book. But yeah, pretty happy with it. I hope you've enjoyed this video and hopefully you've learned something. Good luck.